Oakland. Doug Flutie and Boston College had their great win at Miami. No stripe on the hat. It's kind of old school. I like the old school gold. Yep. Better looking gold. So here's the kick. And Hassan Hall, the freshman from Atlanta, fields it at the nine. And Hall will be taken down just shy of the 25 yard line. Let's get to James Bates's keys to the game brought to you by Ford. The horses are now approaching the starting gate and they're all in. <laughs> and that's what it is. You know, we'll go some horse talk with the guys from Louisville. They're all in. And you know what? When that bell rings, they have got to come out the gate. They have got to start fast and get some feel good back in this camp for Boston College. Third downs or third loss. It's just that simple. They have been terrible getting off the field on third downs on defense. Offensively, they haven't been much better staying on the field, converting those third downs. They've got to make it happen today. Pass his first pass toward the tight end. Kamari Everett batted down at the line of scrimmage. And I think it was big Ray Smith, the nose tackle. 96 there, they got the, uh, got the hand up in the air. <laughs> Look at the uni of Ray Smith. Yeah. He's got it all rolled up. The colder it gets, the, the more skin he's going to show. That's an excellent job. That's why you use those hands to separate, keep those guys off of you. If, if you're chest to chest, you can't free those arms up. Had him at, at, at arm's length, use that mirror technique and knock it down. Here's pass. That's Trey Smith and dropped. And James, those are the unforced errors right there that are frustrating Louisville. Well, you go way back to the Western Kentucky game. Frustrating Louisville, frustrating Puma Pass. Puma Pass, remember, he, that was the game Malik Cunningham came on, provided the spark, came back and won that football game. The next week at Virginia, Malik Cunningham started. But early on, some of those incompletions from Puma Pass were, were drops. And drops not just from guys like, like Trey, but guys like Jalen Smith, who is finally kind of getting his groove back. Third down in trouble and a sack. Wyatt Gray tracks down Puma Pass back inside the 10. Three and out goes BC on defense. Well, that's just what you drew up defensively. You wanted to get there. Watch the. It's a delayed stunt by Wyatt Ray. It's going to come from that defensive end spot. Offensive linemen think they've got everything locked down. Oh, by the way, there's a great big opening, and Wyatt Ray just runs him down to knock down, and that was huge. They, they could not get off the field defensively last week. Mason King to punt it away, and this is Michael Walker who's going to let it hit. And it then bounces up and contacts a card right about the Boston College or the uh, Louisville 45 yard line. It's just a 32 yard punt by King and plus field territory now for Anthony Brown, the redshirt sophomore from Cliffwood, New Jersey at the controls for Steve Adazio's team. Well, if they draw one up now for the sophomore here today, Anthony Brown, they, they had the ball plays called last week against NC State and there were a couple misses early on. If they've got one drawn up, they've got the right play called. They've got to connect. They got to hit it early today. Here's Ben Glines filling in for A.J. Dillon had 100 yards and change last week in Raleigh and he'll fight to the edge in the boundary for a yard or two. D. Smith, the cards leading tackler coming down from the safety spot to make the play and BC quickly over the football second down and about eight here for not, the Eagles not yet even over the football they didn't have a football to be down over here they go play fake by Brown Tommy Sweeney the tight end knocked out of bounds shy of the first down by Dorian Etheridge the linebacker it'll be third down coming up for Boston College six yard throw to Tommy Sweeney and this this is a very big third down here. It's a, it's to convert here, stay on the field. That fast start that we talked about that Louisville needed. They certainly didn't get it offensively. BC needs to put it on de uh, defensively too. Third down and Glines pushes forward for the first to the 32 yard line. And Ben Glines started the year as a wide receiver out of St. X in Cincinnati. And James, he's our hearty star to watch here today. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Just until last week was still listed on the uh, wide receiver depth chart, but he certainly runs like a big bad running back. And he's been a nice spark, a nice fill in for the injured A.J. Dillon. We talked about off the top of the show, scored one on the ground and in the air at NC State last weekend in the second half. And 
you know, this fast start, even Rebecca hit on it, the cold weather, whereas you may get some of that in Louisville. There are a lot of Floridians on this team, and they're not used to it, the young ones especially. Look at this, wide open down the backside, the tight end. And it's going to be a touchdown for Hunter Long. How about that? Out of nowhere comes Hunter Long for the catch. Got a lot of tight ends that can do a lot of different things on this team. They're here. They'll bring all the way across in motion is Ray Martin. And it's Hunter Long setting up shop down in a bust in coverage by Louisville off the play action look. They're going to take another look at this to see if he did it and get into the end zone. But that is exactly the start that Anthony Brown, Steve Adazio, and this home team, Boston College team, they needed to get it going like that. And you know what? It was huge. He had last week, he had a guy in Jeff Smith wide open in the corner of the end zone. On the first drive, he missed him. This time he hits him, and whether they're in or not, they're going to be knocking at the door. They're going to have six points on the board, and that is exactly what they wanted to do. Tell you what, you might want to buy Hunter Long in your next touchdown lottery. Three catches and two touchdowns if this one stands, James. And his average is going to be right about 30-some yards a catch. That's not bad, is it? That, okay, so here's, here's what they're looking at. Remember, it was called a touchdown on the field. This ball, this ball cannot be outside the pylon. It's, it's, it's got to come inside the pylon. Even if his body is out of bounds, the ball has to come inside the pylon, and that's what they're looking at. And, and the question will be, is there an angle where they can overturn it? Remember, he, the ruling on the field was a touchdown. Right. And if that's the ball that we see there briefly, it looks like it's inside the pylon. Now, that's just one angle, obviously. Well, and, and it's not the best thing. And, but you know what's interesting is the freshmen, a lot of players will put that ball on the inside trying to get it across the pylon. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So it is a touchdown for Hunter Long, his third catch of the year, and his second score. And boy, what a confidence boost for Anthony Brown, James. Absolutely. Didn't try to bring it to that inside hand. That's where you see so many of those fumbles, guys trying to get it over that goal line. And the point after is good by Colton Lichtenberg. Five plays, 45 yards, minute 35. It's a 26-yard touchdown pass. Anthony Brown to Hunter Long. Lead seven to nothing. Here's Hassan Hall waiting on the kick. Jungled it about the three. He'll get to the 16. There'll be a flag. That's a block in the back on Louisville. Wow. And that'll push the cards back. Hassan mm. Hall, we'll see him at running back quite a bit today for Bobby Petrino. He's a speedster that can go and first two opportunities to cover. And During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team, number 98. Half a distance to the goal, first down. BC Tafarius has done Peterson is the guilty party on the block in the back for sorry, Bobby Petrino. Sorry, West, BC's yeah. done a good job both times covering and locking him down. And you see right there, boom. Well, that's pretty easy to see, middle of the screen, and that's just, you, you can't do that. It's like two hands. It's not, there's no maybe about that. And here you go. Now you're in an even deeper hole. Three and out, Puma pass in this offense. First time out, they got to get something going. Ball at the eight, here's the toss, and this is Hall, who can really fly, picking up a couple. Got taken down, and that was Brandon Sebastian. Now, there are going to be some things that it was interesting talking to Jim Reed, the great defensive coordinator at BC, about how they're going to match a little bit of what Louisville elects to do with all the personnel packages that Bobby Petrino can throw at you. Right, a lot of that now is it'll get when you get in nickel situations, you you worry about getting some mismatches in there when you've got a running quarterback. Lamar Jackson stung him early and often the last couple years. That ball hit the ground and it's fumbled again, and then the hit is made. Strahan, the linebacker, polished off Hall, but looked like Puma Pass never really had the snap here, James. Well, when it sprinkles, it pours. A light drizzle down on the field. And, it, you know, in in week two, there were some issues with the wet ball with Puma Pass. And Bobby Petrino told us they worked in the rain this week. They had a, a rain and that he doesn't see any issues handling the football with Puma Pass. A little bit low, that snap. But, I mean, that's, that's an everyday thing, and he's got to hold on to that. 
from the pocket, center of the field, and he'll sneak out, but is pulled down shy of the first down, I believe, at the 17 by Zach Allen. That's the best offensive play Louisville's had, and it was looked like a pass play, and Puma pass just tried to escape the pocket and make something positive happen. Well, it absolutely was. I think they'll have a couple packages in here for, for design quarterback called runs with Malik Cunningham. And, and for that, absolutely waiting for somebody to get open, had some time, the pocket finally collapses. They almost got the first down. Right. And another three and out for the Eagle D. Mason King to punt it to Michael Walker. Return game could be interesting today. Both these guys, both these schools have two of the more exciting return guys, but boy, Louisville covered that one very well. Cards got down there quickly. That was well done. Jacopo along with Bateman. 34-yard punt back to Chestnut Hill after this. Wolfpack wins the big game, and then James Bates gonna offer you his thoughts on next Saturday's ball game at Frank Howard Field. The Pack and Tigers headline week eight in the ACC. Uh oh, little flea flicker. Michael Walker, the catch inside the ten. Anthony Brown is rolling early. Forty-two yards, James. Absolutely, and this wasn't a shot. I mean, Louisville, believe it or not, did a good job of recognizing. They recognized, but the defensive back fell and couldn't catch back up, and the pass still had to be perfect, even though it was the okie doke. Now Louisville having all kinds of trouble substituting men in as they set that football. Here's Brown. This is Glines at the five, and Louisville tightens from their defensive front and pushes him back. So not much there for Ben Glines on first down. Scott Leffler, lefty. As his offense goes down into the CPI red zone, he loves the trickery. He's got a lot that they can do with former quarterbacks all around. Out in the flat, and the catch is made, and that is Ray Martin, the redshirt junior, Bell Harbor, New York, hauling it in. You know, it's and, and you, you love seeing that play call early because those are the ones that just kind of crush you. You know, it's it's the momentum, momentum we talked about early. You get the big hitter. Now see if they can punch it in. Tommy Sweeney on the edge, setting the block for his guy. Yep. Ben Glines goes in for the touchdown. Number three on the ground this year for Glines. Uh, Tommy Sweeney, we'll have to take a look at it, Wes, but he might... <laughs> Thought maybe you might see a little yellow flag up there on the right side of your screen. He does all he can. Yeah, he had a hold of that jersey, but we've had the discussions with a lot of these coaches. It's, football's changing a little bit. And, hey, if they're going to let you hold, you're on the offensive line, you might as well do it, right? And now play will be stopped with nine minutes even to go here in the substitution quarter. On the defense, half a distance to the goal, try for point. So Tommy Sweeney getting handshakes on the BC bench. Adazio's team has got two touchdowns on the board in the first six minutes of play. And Louisville, by the way, at this point is good, James. Will have been outscored 70 to 14 in the first quarter this year. With this offense, that Bobby Petrino thought might be even more efficient than they have the past two years in preseason. Yep. It's hard to believe. Kick is good from Lichtenberg. Ben Glines out of St. X in Cincinnati. School's been awfully good to BC. And our Jaguar scoring drive, the drive, brought to you by Jaguar. It was a quick one. Get Glines some skyline chili, man. They got the skyline chili, the pipeline, and there's Glines getting to the edge off the block on the edge by the tight end, Tommy Sweeney. But, but big, big, big stuff for Anthony Brown. He's, he's a quarterback. We've seen him make those throws. You go back to the Wake Forest game, he makes all those throws. And he, he can get hot and cold, and he was cold in that first half against NC State. But he's hit a couple that he that, that were there here so far today. So his confidence has got to be in the right place now. 
for BC and well, 14 to nothing, that'll certainly help you with nine minutes still left to go in the first quarter. End over in kick toward Hall and he's gonna let it hit in the end zone and Louisville will get their best starting position at its 25 and time for our Sonova's greatness made here. Visit Rebecca with a special guest. That's right, Wes. I've got Cameron Moore, who was a starting quarterback here for the Eagles for three years, but this year he now plays on Sundays for the Giants and the NFL. Yeah. You're back, though, for homecoming weekend. How special is this? Um, this is very special. Uh, my first time back since uh, getting drafted, so it's a special feeling here this weekend. Now, you remember the Louisville game last year. I'm sure you made a big play. Take me through that. Um, well, we actually had a guy, Ham Tevers, come in, step in, and make a big play to force the fumble. Um, and I recovered that, tried to get as much yards as I could, and uh, that led to us kicking a field goal and winning the game on the road. Well, we're watching that video right now. That was quite a play, and really a, a good turnaround for this Boston College team was that Louisville game. Is that how you remember it? Yeah, definitely. That I felt like that the win versus Louisville springboarded us into, uh, I think it was four straight wins after that. But um, yeah, it was a great win for us. Now, I know Coach Adazio and his staff have really changed the culture here. This is this is a tough place to play. You got to be yeah. tough. You got to be hard nosed kind of guy. Exactly. How has that prepared you for the NFL? Um, just honestly being able to battle adversity. Uh, the toughness you get here, you can you can face anything. And they always talk about sudden change, being on your toes, and being ready to adapt. And that's pretty much what the NFL is. And now you're getting to kind of coach, because I had to pull you away from the benches over there to come and talk to me. So hanging out with the guys. Yeah, definitely. It's great to be back. All right, Cameron. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. All right. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks to Cameron Moore, tremendous player for Don Brown, who was here and then later went to Michigan. And of course, Jim Reed, the coordinator now. And you saw Devontae Pete, big 22 yard catch. Louisville at the midfield spot. And here's Puma pass on a little RPO. And He'll keep it on the replay for about five yards. First venture into BC territory. Will Harris, the safety, made the stop. Well, you saw the last two plays, you see the difference in using the legs. It, this is a guy in Puma Pass that can move a little bit. As you see guys, go, look at him go after that rock, jumping in there, trying to get a piece of it. Louisville is 127th in turnover margin. Look at the ball deep here and overthrown, looking for 2-2 Atwell. The freshman from Miami at 155 pounds on the post route had gotten behind Lucas Dennis. Couple steps, couldn't connect, but there's there's the speed, and it's all over. It's it's 2-2 Atwell, it's it's Hassan Hall. They've got some guys that can flat fly, and that's that's why I said off the top, you let them stick around and make a big play and give them some confidence. And this is a team that if they, they get some feel good going, that they can be extremely dangerous, even though they've been down in the dumps here as of late. Still trying for their first third down pickup here. Third down and five it is, James. And here on the near side, Seth Dawkins. The catch, he had two for 21 last week against Georgia Tech. And that's about an eight-yard throw there for the first down. Well, it's good to see Seth Dawkins getting back in there, the junior from Columbus, Ohio. He's had the hamstring issue. He hasn't played a ton. And, and again, it's an offensive line that's, that's given some, some time to Puma pass and letting these routes develop. Let them come all the way across the field. Nice pickup on first down to keep this drive alive. Four receivers here in the package. Pass. Here to the near side, that is Devontae Pete's second catch. Now this Devontae Pete out of Pompano Beach is 6'6", 205 pounds. He's now got three straight games of at least two receptions, James, and he's a guy in, a, in an area that, quite frankly, has been a struggle. He's kind of emerging for this Louisville team a little bit. Absolutely. It's, you know, they've had some guys banged up. Fortunately, they're getting guys back out there and healthy, like Seth Dawkins, like Jalen Smith. Little counter and no fooling there. Kevin Blutzer, who had the interception in Raleigh last week, comes away with a play behind the line there. Boy, this is just smart football. This is eyes, this is vision. You see those big bodies, you see those big bodies that are coming across. The white jerseys are coming across for a reason. Here he is in the middle. You see the misdirection? He'll take a step this way, but immediately those bodies are going for a reason, and they send him the other way. He sets up shop right on the edge, and it's nothing doing. A lot of youngsters will go running out of there in a hurry the wrong way. In the pocket pass, flushed. Back across his body, incomplete. Looked like he was trying to get to either Fitzpatrick or to Hall. 
And instead, it's going to be third and long. Nice job by Pass. It's started to get into it earlier. On the big pickup on second down, it, it Pass showed you how he can buy some time with his legs. Here he does the same thing. Throw is just off the mark. Decent coverage there. And it's a secondary that had pretty good coverage throughout the day against NC State last week. And Bobby Petrino was hot. He wanted a flag. Wanted a uh, defensive pass interference on that one. He, he won't get it. So here comes the punt team. Seven plays and now the third punt in as many possessions for King. He's trying to flip this one over. It will hit at the five and well done by Louisville to cover it up. In fact, it was the long snapper Mitch Hall that got down there to touch it up for the cards, James. How about King? That's now 11 inside the 20. He's been excellent. One of the best punters in the ace bench. He, he continued to yell throughout the break. Glides again, kind of poking and prodding. The ball is fumbled. Glides went to the ground. Now, was he ruled down or is it ruled a turnover? Clock is stopped. Dorian Etheridge recovered it on the bounce. Now, did he hit the ground before the ball got jarred loose? Well, this is just what the cards need after yep. putting them down here deep. Still in. Well, they're going to look at this, of course, but Okiki knocked it loose, and it looked like Etheridge came up with the rock. It's been ruled a fumble. Okay, you can't see there. Again, like Wes just said, they called it a fumble on the field, so they have to have evidence to overturn it. Looks like the left hand might have hit the ground. It doesn't review. matter, though. Yep. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Louisville. And they can't see anything through there. Well, that very first look might be our best look, but I don't know that it's one you can overturn. Here it comes again. All right. Balls coming out. Yeah. He, the way he's extended it, it's, I, I don't think you have anything that, that can overturn it, Wes. Here's, I agree. This is a little bit of, of a blurry look right there in the middle. And they're showing it on the video boards here at Alumni Stadium on this rainy Saturday. Boy, what a momentum swing wow. this would be. Huge. Well, it was interesting. We were talking with Steve Adazio about this yesterday. Louisville has turned it over 14 times. Boston College has taken away the ball 16 times. You never see a 30 differential no. in those two numbers. You see 20s occasionally. 30 is unheard of sometimes. Cardinals second to last in the NCAA in turnover margin. Yeah. So not only have they been coughing it up, but they haven't been getting it back. Here's a get back. They try to take one more look at it. That knee, it's a. The replay bit official is there. Jack Kramer. The ruling on the field stands. There you go. First down over. So right. it is a fumble on the second play. And now the first turnover of the ball game goes the way of the cards, who trail with 526 to play in this opening period. Huge. Turnovers late in that Florida State game is what cost them. Could it be a turnover? early in this game in favor of Bobby Petrino's team that puts them back into it, gets some, gets them some juice and some feel good. They need to get in the paint here. They absolutely can't settle for a field goal. They need to punch it in. Pistol set with Trey Smith, the running back. Pass to keep it, got nothing. Boy, that was well defended. Zach Allen made the play, but Strahan, the linebacker, almost intercepted the handoff. Oh, no, that was Allen that was there and then came back and made the play. Goodness, James. Boy, and, and, and an excellent <laughs> job. If you know what, as a linebacker, if you don't have to deal with those big bodies, don't go up and take them on, get tangled up with them. Strahan does a good job, too. Allen as well. Here comes second down. Smith will carry here and to about the three, perhaps the two for third down. Allen and Will Harris. James, just curious here. They're so good at tight end, Louisville. Mickey Crum, right. Kamari right. Everett. Uh, do they go tight end here? Short well, yardage like this? Well, and, and now's a situation where it, it's all eyes on that tight end. You run it on first and second down where you had the threat maybe of a, a play action pass. Malik Cunningham's come in at quarterback here. 
Cunningham will keep it to the left side and did not get in. Isaiah McDuffie, 55, makes the stop. Well, this is tough because you got to think a big Puma pass at 6'4", 235, might be able to power that extra inch. Cunningham, 6'1", 190. Yeah, he can jet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, they need to look at it. That's, that could be a touchdown. They're quick over the ball, though. I don't know that they will. Here's Cunningham trying to drive in. Did he get in? Louisville says he's in. Did not get in. The field is he's short. To the further review, the ruling on the field is the runner was stopped short of the goal line. Looked like the ball was reached out, but was he down before the ball was reached out? The ruling on the field here is going to be the critical portion of this, I think. Again, right. And and then you take it a step further. Will there be an angle? that allows us to overturn it. You know, and I, I'm impressed with the fight of Malik Cunningham and the trust in the young man. See, here's the deal. He, he's not down because he's not on the ground. He's, he's, he's leaning forward. I, you know, and, and, the, and the, the beautiful thing about it is, is he's got his, his teammate there, Kamari Everett, that's like not trying to pull the He's just trying to pull the ball just a little he bit. He is trying to pull the ball. Just, just get, not just trying to pull out. the ball, but he's pulling the ball. Yeah, I mean, just, you know. <laughs> now that's on the white, which is, but the, is the knee down? Well, I, I Do don't they know think, the ruling on the yeah. field is he was not in. And so and here's the way they'll look at it. They'll look at it and, and you know, when we get a chance, I'd like to go back to the play before because I think they were they were so fast over that ball. And how about the trust too that, he, that for Bobby Petrino just put it in the hands of Malik Cunningham right. and just, you know, hey, go out there and, and make it happen. But if his knee was down, you're not going to be able to see in all of that mess if it was ever down. I would say that it wouldn't, it, he never would have touched the ground right. because he's on top of everybody else. It's everything kind of tightens up and changes when you get down there on the goal line. You know, I mean, if he's laying on that pile and then stands up and goes and runs 50 yards in midfield, it all counts and, and, and that's all everybody cares about. That's just tough because, again, it's you've got two oh, yeah. plays within a few minutes of each other where you, you maybe could could say it was going to be overturned, but you just didn't have the, the angle. You didn't have the shot to upstairs make the replay official say, no, you've got to change that around. Well, remember, Jack Kramer's the replay official, William Dixon the communicator, and they're on the connection to Greensboro to the command center. And so Greensboro is also looking in on this. And Ted Jackson oversees that operation, and it's taken a while. So sometimes, at least, James, I'll tell you, in my Sunday experience, the longer it goes means there's a chance of a reversal here. But I'm with you. I'm back to the play before where could you tell if Cunningham's knee was down before the ball broke the plane or vice versa? Did the ball break the plane before the right knee was down? And you can see they're busily at work here. Now here's the third down play. Right, this, uh, remember, this isn't the one that matters to anybody else. There's, there's the knee down, though. Left knee's okay, down. Okay, all right. So that left knee's down. So that, that was the correct call. Just to, just to make sure we're clear on that. And again, this is that, that third down play. All right. Yep. So, so that's over. That was the correct call. It was a good effort by Malik Cunningham. But it's the fourth down play that's in question. And it's in when they come back with the replay review with the wording. It's, I'm gonna guess that it'll say the play stands because they can't confirm it, and they, I don't think they can overturn it here either. So. Now here's the fourth down play. You know, and, and an excellent job defensively. Can't get a number there by BC to tackle up high. He can't tackle low on the goal line. You, 
can't tackle low on the goal line because you tackle them low and they can lean in. You got to hit them up high, hit them up at those shoulder pads and stand them up. But you know, it's again, you've got a third down and short, a fourth down and short right at the goal line, and you've got you've got a, a beast at quarterback in Puma Pats. Yep. It's and, and it's I understand that there are these situations where you've got some quarterback run situations. You've got this package for Malik Cunningham in there. When he, when he has some space and he can make some guys miss in space. And yeah, you can put that foot in the ground and turn it up and get there towards the goal line. But when push comes to shove, can he power through? Here it comes. After review, it was determined that the ball crossed the goal line before the runner's body was on the ground. Touchdown. So there you go, and what a great big reversal for the guys in the white unis. Look at Cunningham continuing to fight. Bobby Petrino said he's had an excellent attitude throughout the week. There's Adazio's reaction, still keeping his guys pumped up. After the touchdown. Big time turn of events there for the cards with the turnover and then six. Freaky's point is blocked. Scooped up, half Cheevers. And he won't get very far. In fact, it's Jordan Davis, a backup at tight end, that makes the tackle on him. Boy, they block a field goal last week, a punt last week. This is the first time they've had a miss on a field goal or an extra point for Louisville. 16 of 16 on extra points. It's Zach Allen that's going to get in there and get the block. Boy, this is a is Steve Adazio's team becoming becoming the new Beamer ball up here with the special teams blocks. My goodness. And again, it's that momentum. Hey, it's one point and it's early in the game, but finish it off. Be crisp, be crisp and then go out there, get three and out, get that offense back on the field and feel like you're supposed to feel feel like you're, you thought you were going to feel coming into this football season. Just get some some feel good, some positive, and, and things being crisp and things working for you. James, does anybody grind it like the 58-year-old native of Farmington, Connecticut? Huh? I mean, no team in the country personifies their coach's personality better than this one does. Yeah, yeah. And he's such a good fit here. Oh, he really is. You know? And he boy, really he's is. done a great job just building this thing. He, I think that the thing that he does best is ordering up our lunch from Lemon Jello that come for our production oh meeting. There's some good meatballs. Oh, my heavens. And this uh -oh. is Walker. Did that oh. pop out? And now we got guys being thrown into the bench area here. Louisville says they got a fumble, and they come out of there with it. The cards come out with the football. Walker. And it looks like Quinn Head may have done it. Walker had a big fumble against Temple on a kick return. They've been great special teams wise, except for a couple big turnovers. And here's Walker again, who's been one of the best around. He just runs into his own guy and an excellent job of falling on it. And how about this? You're down 14 to nothing. Speaking of teams that refuse to quit, I mean, Louisville, even though early in the game, everything has gone wrong. They had 66 scored against them in the Georgia Tech game last weekend. Just an embarrassing loss on Friday night. The whole country watching. They go down 14 to nothing. And now, thanks to some turnovers, Trying to turn this thing around and go down and, and have a chance to come within one point or tie it up. There are flags everywhere. One over toward the Louisville sideline. There was one thrown here near the BC bench. David Epperly's got to sort this out. He's been very busy here in the first 11 and a half minutes of the ball game. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Louisville. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on Louisville number 86. 15 yard penalty. Wow. That is number 86, first unsportsmanlike. We also have a sideline warning on the Louisville bench. So Devontae Pete gets the unsportsmanlike, the sideline warning after the head fumble recovery of Walker's giveaway. So rather than starting at the BC 25, Louisville's fifth possession, James, two free possessions on the house here for the cards. Comes at the 40 yard line with Puma pass back at quarterback. Be careful now, Jim Reed's defense. Be alert for that sudden change. 
be alert for that quick turnover and, and watch him trying to go, go up top. You think you're gonna get a rest, get off the field for a little bit. You're back out there playing defense, you better be ready. Pass wants the throw, pressure coming back across the middle, catch made, and that's Mickey Crum, the tight end, back toward the 20 yard line. And all of a sudden, Louisville's got some momentum. McDuffie leads the tackle parade with the safety, Lucas Dennis. How about it? Nice play pass and Puma pass just standing in there tall. His offensive line starting to give him some time. And when you got a big target like Crum just setting up shop in the middle of the field, easy to hit. And then Crum looking pretty good, tucking it and going and getting some more. Just ahead of three minutes to go in this first period. Fascinating. First few series of football here at Alumni Stadium. 14 0 Boston College, and then Louisville on the beneficiary now. Two fumbles. And the cards are driving again. McDuffie got a hand in the passing lane on a ball intended again for the tight end crumb. Nice job by McDuffie. Again, this, this isn't the guy who's got to go play pass first in, in McDuffie. He's a linebacker. So he's, he's got to respect that run fake. He's got to stay in there. And then he plays a little bit of catch up and does an excellent job putting that front arm in front, knocking it away, forcing second down. Five wide here, James, including the uh, Fitzpatrick in the slot to the left, and there's where pass will go with it. Fitzpatrick will have the first down inside the 10, knocked out of bounds at the nine, first and goal for the cards. Strahan, the linebacker, made the play on a 13-yard throw and catch. And trailing the whole way through. And Puma Pass starting to get a little bit of rhythm with his throwing with you know is the, the combination of, of the feet moving it around a little bit he sprints out five wides in, in the secondary a little bit of a bust because everybody trailing right there and it's first down and goal once again that's from the tight end in motion smith inside the five chop down around the two Kenny Thomas on the lead blocks there. He's lined up at right guard. Well, a nice job there. Boy, Smith's hurt too. Trey Smith's got to come out of there. Shoulder. Oh, boy. So they bring Hassan Hall in. You mentioned Kenny Thomas. Look, 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 moving for a big man before he laid the lumber. Here's Hall trying to get to the edge. And Hassan Hall into the end zone. His first rushing score of the year. Comes with 137 to play here in the first period. There's a lot more where that came from. This guy can fly. Hassan Hall. Second touchdown of the day for Louisville. And a little bit of holding on that edge, but I guess you some for you, some for us. They, uh, Tommy Sweeney didn't get called earlier on the BC touchdown. And that time they were holding Zach Allen. He was yanked backwards and unable to go and set that edge. Three yard run by Hall. Creaky's point after good. Within a point now are the cards and another look. Here. Watch down here. What, what you can see Allen try to get outside. He's, he's pulled back and then if, but you know that's that's the way they're letting them play on the offensive line though. That, that to me is one of the ways how how much all, uh, the game of football has changed but not to take anything away from the good job of the blocking by the receivers down the field and of course the speed to get to that corner get it in the paint for Hassan Hall three yard run by Hall the freshman from Maynard Jackson High School in Atlanta very quickly a look at the Atlantic standings we told you of course, the tough loss in Raleigh last week. BC's at level par. Louisville is winless in three league games. Clemson and NC State have that bye at the top, James, before they go to battle next Saturday in the upstate. And, of course, Syracuse is off this week. Florida State is off this week as well. End over end kick, and here is Walker again. Looking at the right side, Michael Walker out across the 30 and quickly to the 35, 36 yard line. 27 yard return by Walker. After Louisville has taken two turnovers, run nine plays and tied the game at 14. Next Saturday, we are headed up to uh, Wallace Wade Outdoor Stadium in Durham, James. We'll get a look at Daniel Jones and Alameda Zacchaeus.
1230 our coverage starts. Should be a pretty good one. Yeah, Duke's got a big one today against Georgia Tech. Be an interesting game. That's yeah. Blue Devils are up, by the way, 7 to nothing. Partner, one point game here. You gave him that extra point now, 14 yep. 13. One point game. Here's Brown. He'll have to throw it away on the bootleg. And a look ahead to next Saturday in Durham with Jordan Ellis and Dylan Singleton for their respective schools. What time's that, uh, that uh, Clemson NC State? We're going to be able to call this one and, and go watch the uh, <laughs> go watch the other two get after it, too? I think we might miss the uh, first couple of series there. Yeah, all right. Here's Glines. He'll pick up right at six, almost seven on second down. And Rebecca Ben Glines has been a nice find in the running back spot in the absence of Dylan. He sure has, and the plays we've seen him make today are a perfect, perfect example of coaches putting him in the right position schematically. Glenn said every week he and the backs watch film with their coaches. The coaches ask the players what type of runs they like that week based on the defense they're prepping to face. And uh, he says, you know what, he just sees things differently than the other backs. So good job on the coaches there. Well, third down play and C.J. Avery back Whoa. in the lineup, a big lick. Welcome back, C.J. Avery. Are you kidding me? Watch him blow up this lead blocker and I mean blow him right into the lap of Ben Grimes and just like that you've got a Boston College offense that tried to go fast again and they get a three and out now they're going to put it back in the hands of Louisville and that defense is going to be forced to step right back out there we saw too much of this against NC State and we got movement was that Boston College snap infraction number 46 offense yep. five yard penalty fourth down that's a long snapper Jimmy Martin. So the unforced error on Boston College and teams. Rajay Burns is deep to take this kick now from Grant Carlson. Now Burns is second in the ACC and ninth nationally at 16 and a half yards of return. He went 55 against Indiana State for a touchdown. Cards to within a point. Low kick. Burns trying to sneak here to the near side, and Martin does a nice job holding on and pulling him down right about the 25 yard line. 41 yard punt and a four yard return. Here's that punt return. Good job. The, the cover teams have been have been good for Boston College here today. It's I, I can't wait to get a replay of that. <laughs> C.J. Avery. That's the kind of stuff to me that, that gets that gets me jazzed and, and, and lets me feel like football is still football because they'll never call a targeting <laughs> on on a linebacker just stepping up, reading and reacting and lighting up a big offensive lineman and blowing up a play. Pass wants to throw on first down. Looking out the backside, there's Hall and Hassan Hall going to roll out for nine yards to the 35-yard line. Tajamir Torres, the stop for Boston College. Eagles got off to a running start. They led 14 to nothing, but two fumbles have been cashed in for scores. Louisville to within a point after a period of the two turnovers in the red zone. Interceptions by Finn. Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Marcus Riley. And Zach Allen. Is rolling out the orientation program. A uh, uh, jet sweep. It's a jet sweep them up. Get oh. the dustpan now. <laughs> Man. Does that get you fueled up too, Batesy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we've had the, the CJ Avery play, and then, you know, just the simple play by McDuffie earlier and Zach Allen. Pass. Look at the throw. Receivers. Sixth career interception, fourth of the year. For Chambers. Amp Chevers watches this all the way. They bring the bodies, the blitz is there. And a great job by Cheevers to jump in front of the Puma Pass throw for the big pick. What a big turnover for BC. And it was Ham Cheevers, remember, last year that had the big strip that Cameron Moore, who was talking with Rebecca earlier, that he picked up. Cheevers with a big force turnover in that close game. And here's a big one to get things going the Eagles' way. Glides fighting for yards. James, remember? Louisville got nine yards on first down 
on second down was the play by Allen to yeah. take down Riley and on third down the turnover. How about that? Absolutely. And here goes Glines and company right back at it. Nice pickup for BC on first down. And they're quickly over the ball. Glines trying to get to the edge. Picks a spot. First down. Flag thrown. That might be a hold. Offense, number 67, 10-yard yep. penalty, second down. Aaron Montero, the left tackle. Here's one more look at it, number four here. You know, it, it, it was the hands, the bigger body. Those receivers gave him fits last week in good position. Jalen Smith, a lot bigger, tries to separate. He does, but Cheevers comes right back at it. Defensive back from Trenton, Florida, one of nine Floridians on this team, a state champ back there at the Trenton Tigers. Probably the, the motivational talk that James Bates had to that team back in high school days. <laughs> Here's Brown, a little throwback, and Levy was the intended receiver, but it's incomplete, so it becomes third long. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Motivational well, talk? It's right there by Gainesville. Sir. Yeah. And, you know, they want the best when they're going for the state titles. Is that right? They, they brought in the heavy hitter in Batesy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some good kids there, though, man. Great town, and there's a nice job by Brown to keep this one in. Could have been a disaster. Third. Louisville showing blitz here on Anthony Brown. They only bring three. Out in the flat, that's Levy the catch, and down to about the 27. And leave him up by five shy. Now, Eagles don't have what they would call the most confident kick game. Well, they've got a good kicker in Lichtenberg right. who's hit some game winners in his career, but he's been injured. And, and they, you know, they, they worry about the leg strength, so they're going to... He was 33 yards last week at NC State in his first try of the year. So they're not going to try 43 here. They're going to go for it on fourth and five. Out the back door, Levy beyond his reach. And a flag thrown from here in front of the B.C. bench toward the middle of the field. D. Smith was in coverage. Oh, boy. No, that's not what that flag is No, no, about. I don't think so either. There was no foul on the play. Result of the play, first down, local. Hey, and how, it's a nice job. There's been, they've done a good job in coverage. This Louisville secondary. Smith right there in trail. And, you know, Smith being tight there forced that Anthony Brown ball to, to have a little bit of air underneath it. And you get the alligator arms out there when you know you've got the headhunters, Levy. Not so, able to, to quite extend out all the way to pull it back in. So how about this Louisville D? Yep. Interception by Hamp Cheevers. And unlike this Louisville team, that, yeah, they got one on the goal line, but they've got 13 points off of turnovers. Nothing to show for after the big pick. Pass. And a great catch, and that's Fitzpatrick stepping out of bounds up the far side near the 44-yard line. And that'll be a throw right at about 17 in the first down. There you go. A nice job to just motor it down there. And that zone covers and the only guy that's anywhere near is, is a linebacker Kevin Bletcher pass will keep it scramble to the outside Bobby Petrino told us James a little more run put in the playbook this week for Puma pass that's 14 yards well, that's a nice looking ball play there. And so, you know, you've got Lucas Dennis out there in coverage, and he reads. Hey, there's a run, but he's also got to take care of his coverage responsibility, and he's really the only defender. But you danged if you do, danged if you don't. Yep. He, he, he comes at it, and it's an easy dump off pass on the RPO for Puma Pack. He's starting to click right now for the cards offensively. Absolutely. They trail a point with three minutes gone, second period. Pass, lobbing one, near side. Dawkins can't come up with it. 
receivers who had the pick was in coverage of Seth Dawkins. You know, maybe not quite the drops from earlier, but, but this was one that absolutely you have to catch if you guys want to turn it back around. It's a nice route run. It's a nice job of lining up. So many times you see these receivers line up too tight to the sidelines, and they don't have that pattern. They don't have that four yards to where that fade can drop in there and give you some room to run it. Hamp Cheevers, on the other hand, he's got to put a body on there. He, he, there cannot be that much separation in coverage in that situation. But a nice, nice ball thrown by Pass. From the tight end in motion, and this is Hall working back toward the 38-yard line. And Strahan the tackle, Rebecca. You guys talking about Louisville starting to click offensively. Well, Jawan Puma Pass told me this week he feels like he's starting to really click. He said he's progressing as the season goes on. He's getting more and more comfortable from each game, and maybe it goes back to just competing behind Lamar Jackson for those years. He said, the one thing I learned is never quit, and he said, I cannot describe how badly we want to win today's game. Well, so far, so good. The cards have withstood an early flurry by BC. This is what Jim Reed was telling us yesterday. When Louisville checks in third down nickel situation, we're going to check. Pass the keeper and the first down. Inside the 30 to the 29 on a nine-yard run, James. We sat down with Jim Reed yesterday, and after our sit-down, he pulled us into his office. And he said, look, this is the cut-up I've made from the last couple years. Lamar Jackson, third down and long. We've got him. We're going to get off the field. And it is this very situation that he just crushed him the last couple years on. They do it again here. Big play. Overthrow of Dawkins with Cheevers in coverage. And it was Will Harris helping at safety, but Ham Cheevers was a principal guy. And that's what happens when that quarterback can be so effective and do so much damage tucking the football and running it in what turns out to be a designed run play. It's, that's not a scramble and let me go try to make something happen. He tucks it. There's nothing there. He's going to tuck it and go. And then you've got your nickel personnel defensively. So you're a little bit weaker to defend against that run. And Bobby Petrino has exploited that the last couple of years against this BC defense. And Jim Reed reminded his guys all week long of that very play. Paul trying to get to the edge and he will be close to the first down. Brandon Sebastian playing a lot today in the sub package. Made the stop at the 21. Eight yard play though, James. Third and short. Talk about the tide turning. It's, yeah. I mean, 14 to nothing before they could even sit down here at Alumni Stadium. And Louisville, a couple big turnovers. And now they're charging down, looking to take their first lead of the day. That's Hall, first down. And I think Rebecca's point a moment ago, how about the confidence of uh, number four at the quarterback spot? Well, number four and, and having some guys that can scoot and run the football for you, too, uh, that certainly helps. Here's the big lick by McDuffie, the linebacker. Yeah, I, I like watching Hall run. Young guy. Pass to the end zone. And there'll be a flag thrown on the ball intended for Jalen Smith and Brandon Sebastian defending. Here's Dave Epperly. Pass interference on the defense, number 10. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line, first down. You know, and that just comes with reps. I mean, it's it's Sebastian, look at him. He's in there. They're both hand fighting a little bit. Now snap that head around. Snap it around. You got to trust it. You got to trust it. You just can't run past. You almost get a sense he was so worried that he was going to run past and get hit with that back shoulder that he refused to turn that head around. But you snap that head around. Those eyes get big by that receiver. Snap that head around. But just don't lose that feel. Don't let him separate too much where he can come away. Here's pass on the keeper, and Louisville takes the lead. 19 straight by the cards, James. You know what's interesting right now is, is last Friday night, this is a Louisville defense that things started working for Georgia Tech, and they all started working. Right now, at this point in this game, see how things are coming together and things are working. Play action pass, uh, you know, the handoff, the, the read for the quarterback. Sometimes it, it, a lot of people will compare. Is that extra point is good? A lot of people will compare to some of those old triple option type teams. And that's the right.
right choice and a great job on the edge. Uma pass and the cards on top now. How about that? Are you currently on? There's music. There's fashion. They see. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Cooled off Bigford. Our visit here. Fielded by Walker at the five. Michael Walker. Trying to skip through a hole, gets to about the 22. Got pushed back there. And a Guys dancing around, high-fiving, lots of smiles, even from Coach Petrino, who's very cool, calm, and collected usually. We saw some emotion from him, too, guys. All right, Rebecca, David Bailey's coming at the running back spot. True freshman gets the ball. And young man, 6'1", 235, out of Ridley, Maryland, who Steve Adazio told us yesterday, well, he's a thumper. <laughs> he called him a thumper. Well, they, and they, that's the thumper they need. That's a, the A.J. Dillon who can thump and, and can also speed it up a little bit, too. Well, Bailey just drives the cards out to the 31. It'll be third and short. Now, this is a whole different kettle of fish from Ben Glines carrying the rock, James. Well, it is, and that's why when, when you have a Glines, you have an A.J. Dillon. Even here, in this case, David Bailey and, and Glines, it's a nice one-two punch. There goes Anthony Brown for four on the sneak. Trying to sneak for one, ends up sneaking for four. First and 10, BC, who's staying with the tempo game, James, despite the six-point deficit here in the second week, which is, which is key. They, they had to get out of that tempo game last week, and it really kind of put them in the, a funk in the first half. They're right back over it now, though. Jeff Smith on a little reverse, and he'll be close to another first down. Now, Jeff Smith is an interesting little element in the offense for Scott Leffler. Well, he certainly is. It's, uh, even BC fans remember. It's not like just like he was a, a high school quarterback. He was a quarterback here. Took a lot of snaps at, at BC. So a situation like that, you've got to go, even if you go into the halftime locker room, Brian Van Gorder, this defensive staff, it, sometimes you're trying to set something up, too, when you get him wide because he has turned and thrown the football down the field many times in his career. Play fake here by Brown. Shoots it back inside. That's Tommy Sweeney to the 49. It'll be second and about eight from there as Dorian Etheridge has another tackle. Boy, the cards really missed Etheridge when he was out with injury, but he's had 15 tackles in their last two ball games coming into the day. Just a sophomore, but he's a guy that coaches call, leader of these linebackers. Here's the Lions trying to sweep. Boy, nice play. Ball popped loose, but he was already ruled down. Rajay Burns got in there to knock him out, huh? Excellent job by Rajay Burns, who can really fly. Obviously, when you've got a great big body like John Baker that's coming at you, boom, watch. You see him coming underneath? Maybe it wasn't John Baker, but it was it was his teammate right there leading the way. You don't want to take on that guy. You're going to get run over like a squirrel in the road. So you go low. He, he rolls the dice a little bit, but comes up big time with the play. Calling procedure on Sweeney, I believe, here. False start. Offense, number 19. No, Glines. Five okay. yard penalty, third down. So Glines went forward and did not. He came set and then went forward, and that caused the uh, penalty up there. You like BC and Tempo better, right, James? There you see there. Yeah. Him out. He, was, he was gonna look kind of ugly if he kept leaning. So it's a third down and ten. There's the throw back to the tight end again. Fourth down and about four. I think you got a punt of the way right there. I'm not in the middle of the field. Well, now they're here comes Carlson to the punt unit. They thought about it, but it's you know the way that Louisville has been rolling. Make them go the length of the field. Make, you know, prove that they're going to go a full football game taking care of that football. They've already thrown one interception. They've had a tough time hanging on to it. Don't give them the short field and the easy way to go if you don't get it on the field. Carlson's punt, end over end. Burns going to run off from it, and in fact, it hits on the backside of the field from 20 yards away from it, inside the 20. Under six to go now. First half action, Louisville, 20. In a disastrous four quarters plus, it is going back to the Georgia Tech game. Yep. A, a much needed turnaround. Play fake by pass. 
Trying to step up in the pocket, and he'll be sacked. Kevin Bletzer, the linebacker, I believe, no. Carafa. Nice job here. You know you've got the two ends that can get there. It's in Wyatt Ray and Zach Allen. The middle, though. What do you got in the middle? Well, there's not much push there, but Carafa does a good job of keeping that offensive lineman at bay. Don't get tangled up with them. Keep separation. Shuck them, and they'll go, go bring down the quarterback. Inside five and a half to go in the opening frame. The rain has stopped. The sun looks like it's trying to maybe come out here at Alumni Stadium on a homecoming Saturday outside of Boston. That's Kamari Everett, the tight end. And pass, fake the handoff, and Zach Allen has been everywhere in this first half. Loss of five, James. Uh, playing in the backfield immediately. Speaking of using your hands, look at Zach Allen get rid of the blocker. And then you know what? Hey, you shouldn't have to say it, but how about the job? Watch Carver. Watch 48 come in here. How many times you see a guy just take his head off? Hey, he, he holds up. The guys are starting to learn. Hey, you, you don't want to cost your team. You don't want to give him a free first down. You don't want to miss the rest of this football game. Good play by Zach Allen. Back to back big plays. Now, know where those sticks are. Keep everything in front of you. Has to throw. Underneath his call, and he will get to the 20 and no more. Chevers and Torres were there collectively for the Eagles. Nice job covering down the field. And then, hey, yeah, go ahead, dump it off underneath. We'll break on the ball. Excellent vice angles. Good coach and Anthony Campanelli, the, the co-defensive coordinator, as Jim Reed calls him, and uh, uh, an outstanding young football coach is the, the leader of this secondary. Coached him up right there on that series, and they get off of the football field. That was a big three and out. Chance for Michael Walker maybe here. Mason King to punt. BC could get good field position. They get a block instead. Levy going to score again for the second week in a row. Travis Levy recovers a block punt in the end zone after Nolan Borgerson blocked it. Boy, they bring the house. If it wasn't the first guy, it could have been the second or third. Take your pick. Takes it right off of his of his foot. And Borgerson with the block, and that's back-to-back -back weeks. Mike Palmer it was last weekend that had the big block with Levy recovering it against NC State. So just like last week, they blocked one off the kicker's foot and now off the punter's foot. And just like that, the Eagles are back in front. Travis Levy's going to quit running after the punter. He's just going to run in the end. Special teams, we take the lead. It's a block, and you know what happens. But you got to, if you're Louisville, you got to get a piece of some, because then it becomes six on two. Who's going to win that? I'm not great at math, but uh, six is better <laughs> than two. But you, you got to release, and you go to, got to go down and cover. But first things first, you got to get a piece of someone. You can't just let them run free. Kick will be short here. Hall and a fair catch call for. So he'll get it at the 25, and so will the cards. And, and that's it. I mean, look at all the guys that, that just completely whiff, and they're already down the field. And, and looking back over your shoulder doesn't, doesn't help. That's what they call a, a watch out block on offense. Like, watch out, because here they come. <laughs> and you've got to slow them down because there's only two guys there. They're at that, that, that last wave of defense the the level of defense and, and there's a look at ricky brown the outside linebacker coach but more importantly the special teams coordinator yeah. for this squad that is blocked now hunts in back-to-back -back weeks and score touchdowns off of those blocks blocked an extra point today while Louisville has the 20 up there in the field goal last week pass to throw sacked. wyatt ray who is the grandson of the legendary crooner, Nat King Cole, James. Oh, yeah. That's a... Okay, here's, here's Wyatt right here. Again, just like early in the game, it's going to be a little bit of a delay. And there's a, he doesn't even have to come inside this time, and, and there's, there's nobody there to put a body on him. 
Is it too cheap to say Cardinals roasting over an open fire? Oh, that, that's good. That was, that, that's, <laughs> that's from six years of working with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I would say I, I was uh, before you threw out that Nat, Nat King Cole. I was stuck on Wyatt. And, you know, I keep going in my head Tombstone with Doc Holliday. Why Wyatt? I am rolling. Yeah, there you go. You're Huckleberry. <laughs> Either way, however you want to put it, man, a couple big sacks for Wyatt Ray, and, and this time, the first time that we saw it in the first quarter, early in the first quarter on that first series, it was a delayed blitz. He came in from the edge. This time, there's just nobody there to, to block it. So it's Back to back now, if you count that punt times, they, they've got to get hands on these, these guys. Saw so Trey Smith lead the game. He's come back in at the running back spot. He'll take a pass out in the flat. And boy, nice tackle. That's Sebastian. Brandon Sebastian playing a bigger role today for Boston College. Remember last week we saw Elijah Jones in the secondary. Today it's been the sure tackling of Sebastian. And a quick timeout called here on third down. Uh, the generator presents our big hits, James. Yeah, uh, they've come, and they've come off. I mean, just guys flying around. We saw the big one just now by Sebastian and going down low. A uh, very physical matchup. It's, you got some big offensive linemen there for Louisville in, in a pretty physical defensive front. Zach Allen and company there for BBC. I got to tell you, Louisville. Dale Arnold here at the TD Garden. Now, for those of you that would like to see the conclusion of the Boston College Louisville game, tune over to Nesson Plus. We've got Bruins pregame coverage starting running back with Brown here. That's Walker in motion. He'll get the carry on the sweep and pick up about three. And Dorian Etheridge another tackle. Boy, they've had some really good Mike linebackers. Of course. Keith Kelsey was there. Etheridge had a big year a season ago as a freshman. We've seen Robert Hicks have a big night. 11 tackles in their win against Western Kentucky. They've got some good, tough middle linebackers. Here's Walker on a throw from Brown. He'll be near a first down, maybe a yard or so shy for third down. Brian Van Gorder's unit, though, on the whole, very young. My goodness. Maybe one of the youngest units, certainly in the ACC, but maybe in college football as well. David Bailey back in here for third and short. Young, but very capable. Yep. They just can't get too frustrated when things aren't going their way. Bailey, straight ahead, first down and more for the freshman. That looks like a guy that had 35 touchdowns as a senior. James, the number one tailback in Maryland, got 11 yards there, David Bailey. Well, David Bailey getting a chance here today. Watch big Chris Lindstrom pave the way. Aaron Montero as well. And remember, it was A.J. Dillon against Louisville a year ago when he had his big breakout day. Brown looking to throw, taking the deep shot. Walker overthrown. Jacopo in coverage, the Californian who was shaken up in the Western Kentucky game and has just worked his way back into the lineup after an injury. So it'll be second down and 10. Levy returns to the lineup now at the running back spot. Or BC really mixing and matching. Jeff Smith has come in as a wide receiver, as has Kobe White, who has yet to have a catch today. And now a flag for procedure, and I think that is going to be on Hunter Long, the tight end, maybe. Number 85. No, nope. Adrizi. It's on Coab Coab Adrizi, the tight end, Rebecca. Guys, an important series here. Quarterback Anthony Brown gathered his offense around, gave him a pep talk. He's been talking tempo all day, but last time out he told his guys, enough, let's get out there, score seven points, and he repeated that several times for emphasis. Second down and long with 89 seconds left. Brown and the catch made. Adrizi, first down to the 29 and a half. 17-yard throw. It was a Dreezy on the procedure penalty. One for you, 15 for me. That was a nicely thrown football there by Anthony Brown. And that's, he's putting it on. He's putting them on the money yep. here today when he needs to. And now Louisville a timeout. They have all timeout. three remaining. So they'll have two more to go. This ball game has been really kind of 
marred by turnovers, but in a way where both teams have tried to take advantage of them, James. Yeah, they, they've gone back and forth here, and that's, the, you know, that's something new for Louisville. They're forcing some. They're getting some of their own. Here's the interception that Camp Cheevers had that BC was unable to do with just a short while ago. But a, a couple costly ones for Steve Adazio's team. Ben Glines fumbling it right near the goal line. It took four plays, but Malik Cunningham stretching it in on that fourth down and goal for the first touchdown for these Louisville Cardinals after they quickly went down 14 to nothing. Bobby Petrino wanting that timeout here. Just regroup his, his, his young unit. Let's, let's get off this football field. Let's hold them right here. One point lead for Boston College at halftime. It's got to feel pretty good after that fast start that they had. Brown the throw. Looking for the end zone and incomplete. <laughs> Intended, I think, for Smith. <laughs> Louisville had Anthony Johnson Look, in coverage. He, he can't break away. It looked like. Okay, I think maybe it was a little bit back and forth from up here. It, it looked like it was one big tangle up. Yeah. And there, there are two officials sitting right there. They wanted a flag, but they didn't get it. But I, I think it was a little bit of both ways there on that. So incomplete, second down and 10 now. Bailey to the 26. David Bailey on the run. 70 seconds to go. Michael Boykin, who's started to get more and more valuable snaps for the cards in their defensive line to stop. Third down and eight. And procedure again, Adrizi. Yeah, she go from a, a third down and eight to a, now what's going to be a, a third down and 13, making it even more difficult. And, you know, you, Factor in the field goal range too, and, and you know you got to be careful too. You want to go fast, you want to go tempo, uh, tempo, keep them off their on, on the heels of their feet there defensively. But at the same time, remember there's some studs over on that other side of the ball, some weapons that can beat you deep and can score in a hurry. You also don't want to give them too much time left on the clock. There is no foul on the play. Louisville called timeout before the ball was snapped. Timeout, Louisville, their second, 30-second timeout. All right. And there is, there's the rub. It's, you know, Louisville's calling that timeout because they're not sure, they're not set. They, and that's why you go tempo. That's why against a team like this, it, it, they're young. You know, it's all, everything's new to them. And look at these offenses that they faced the last few weeks. We had them at Virginia, you know, and, and then right. you, you've, you've got a, a Florida State game that they play in they play so tough and Georgia Tech you got Georgia Tech last week and that was part of the reason Rebecca hit on the contrast in the way they played off the top of the show how Bobby Petrino showed his defense first four series of Georgia Tech now here's the Florida State game not only so they could see the difference in the in the intensity that they played with but just hey we're back to somewhat regular football again because that's such an anomaly and, and, and it really beat them up and, and got them thinking a little bit differently last week. Wanted to make sure they're back in check. Third and eight. And it's caught. Let's Levy, but still very short of the first down at the 21. About a three yard difference to the mark. And right away, Steve Adazio with 35 seconds left. He does have one timeout left. He could probably just take this clock down and then maybe try a field goal, James. Again, it's you know it's where, be right where, is his, where, yards. where is his kicker that's just coming off uh, off an injury? Where where is he with his leg strength? That's yeah. that's kind of the unknown from up here. And when Adazio is he's not waiting to decide. He's just waiting for that clock to tick down. Make sure he doesn't leave too much room. But right. he, but looking at it this way, he's he's going to send Lichtenberg out there and, and give it a try. So we're about to find out how that. I believe it was like a hip and groin type of thing with Lichtenberg, and that's why he's not kicking off anymore because of that that strong that strike that it takes to kick it off. His career best is 43 as a freshman. He had a 42-yarder a year ago, and this is going to be 38. His only field goal of the year came last week in Raleigh at 33. This is a senior from Savannah, Georgia. 
who has been through ups and downs. In his Eagle career. Jeff Smith holds. And now Bobby Petrino will burn his final timeout with just nine seconds left. Ice, ice, Bobby. What a momentum half this ice, has been, ice, right? Bobby, too cold. <laughs> Is that right? Cold. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, how about the, it's we, from when you don't have a, a dog in the fight and you can sit up here and just enjoy some some football. I mean, it's, it's been a, a, an interesting first half to call. And it's, you know, I mean, it's going to be a dog fight in, in the second half. 14 nothing Boston College. Louisville scores 20 in a row. They get touchdowns on the two fumbles by Adazio's team. The momentum for BC comes on a block punt. It's recovered in the end zone for the second week in a row by Travis Levy. And now a chance for the Eagles to extend it here going to the locker room and get the ball to start the half. Lichtenberg kick away. And good. 38 yard field goal with four seconds left. Happy to have that guy back out there. Look at all the hugs from Lichtenberg. Nine plays, 39 yards, and 237. And Louisville and BC both out of timeouts for what will more than likely be just the final play of the first half here. As Longman has come out to kick it away to the cards. Yeah, BC needs to make sure they cover like they have early in this game, though. They've got some dangerous return men. Yep. Hassan Hall can go. Got to bottle them up before you head into the locker room. And in fact, Longman's just going to fire it down the field, and it bounced away. Clock is running, and that'll be the final play of the half. It's expired. Hall will Try and work back here to the near side and reroute and look out. Hassan Hall, only the kicker to beat around the corner and tripped up at the 45. Longman got a hand in there. <laughs> okay, Batesy. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good job by the kicker. I told you, Hassan Hall, make it interesting. Just scooping around and. A couple guys had a chance at it, and he, he changed his direction. Well, Hassan Hall tripped up by Longman. Let's go downstairs. Rebecca's got a Honda dealers of the Carolinas coaches corner with Bobby Petrino. We talked about it earlier with Louisville. Extra points, five-yard penalties. It, all the little things add up. Michael Walker at the goal line. 20. Flipped out over the 25, 26, 27 yard line, and that'll bring Anthony Brown back out. 10 of 15 for 120 yards in the first half, James. Yeah, taking care of the football and hitting a couple that he had to hit. Hunter Long, the touchdown. It's there. It's, you know, it may seem simple, but if you didn't watch first half last week, you wouldn't quite understand. A couple that were there needed to be there, and it helps not only the team and the energy and the momentum for this football team, but the confidence for a young quarterback still, even though he's played a lot of ball. And here are the first half stats. Still those turnovers, both of them coming on fumbles, and the 13 points scored off of it by Louisville. Pretty big. Dazio mentioned that to Rebecca just moments ago. David Bailey gets the start at the running back spot here in the beginning of the second half. Bailey's now got about 27 yards, 28 yards on just six carries. And very quickly, here's Boston College lining up. Jeff Smith on the sweep. Cuts the edge and out to the 36. 
third and about two coming up. James, we've got a very interesting chess match when BC has the ball. Scott Leffler and Brian Van Gorder were together at Auburn. And they're matching wins here today. BC's OC and the Cardinals' first-year defensive coordinator. Sometimes it's about those chess pieces, mm -hmm. too. So you may have how you want to play the game, but it changes with the players. There's Brown to Tommy Sweeney. That'll give Boston College a first down at the 40. And before the game, Lefty and BVG got together and able to spend a few minutes together. Jacopo, the tackle for Louisville. There the guys are. <laughs> It was funny in our visit yesterday. Leffler said, I know what he wants to do. He knows what I want to do. And Van Gordon didn't deny any of that. <laughs> said, yeah, we got a pretty good feel for one another. But you're right about the personnel also factors into the schemes. Here comes Etheridge for Van Gordon. Just one and three, go make, go make the play. You know, it's read it, react. You know, you, sometimes guys will go through there and don't have the speed to take that kind of angle. But, he obviously does. Brown under a little bit of pressure now. Got to get out of there and it'll pick up a yard. It'll still be third and long. That's a nice play. Peterson, the defensive end, the redshirt sophomore, stayed with that one. Yeah, and it's a, you know, this is an Anthony Brown a year ago. And, and, and it was about this time last year, midway through the season, when he really came on too. But he came on with his legs. And, and still looking, even, you know, remember, he had that ACL surgery in the offseason. Still looking for him to, to break it out with those legs. Brown shoots it back here to the near side. It'll be close to the first down. C.J. Lewis, 6'4", sophomore, the catch, just his ninth of the year. And it's fourth and short, and Boston College going for it. This is going to be a big one right there at midfield. A little, little pigtail route coming in there, and they'll hold them up because BC made some substitutions. So Louisville allowed to match. Now they're trying to get lined up fourth and a yard. Anthony Brown had to break the 50. Left foot, right foot, spot differential here. If he broke the 50, he'll have it, and he did. Like Garrison, the extra tight end, trying to help out. In fact, he shoved Brown. <laughs> well, you, can, you can do that now. For a while there, that was that was illegal. Well, spread out. Brown thought about turning it up. James, were they leveling routes to that wide side there for Anthony Brown? Trying to a good job by Louisville, taking it away, not giving him anywhere to go, and, and a good job by Brown. Hey, just eat it. Two-yard gain. Heck of a lot better than forcing one in there and getting a turnover. Levy on the toss to the boundary side. Travis Levy inside the 35. This is what can get you when you go tempo. When everybody's ready, everybody on the same page offensively, watch the big bodies. We've got more big bodies than you've got defenders just mowing them down on the edge, and it gives Levy a chance to get going. Hey, if you're not set, you're not ready for the tempo, defensively it can be a nightmare. Here's Levy trying to reroute on the counter and picks up a couple more. Etheridge, another stop. Yeah, that, that sweep to the boundary side featured Ben Petrula out there. Haven Road for Steve Adazio. Almost four minutes gone here in the third period. BC on the opening drive of the second half. This is their 11th play here. High back. Quarterback under center. Bailey, left side. Big fella. Inside the 10. David Bailey, a touchdown. There's a flag back at the 31. Yeah, it's going to come back. It was Chris Garrison, I believe, tight end. Holding. Offense. Number 67. 10-yard penalty, second down. That'll negate the TD run. Call it on Montero. 81 was in there as, as well. But either way, somebody's going to get tackled. See it right there? Boom. Face mask could have gone in there as well. Boom. It was 81 after all. It was Garrison. They call it on Montero, but there you see that, that other look at it. And there's another hold, 53. He could have got a couple of flags. So that's one way or another. That's the right call. It's a shame. The youngster, the freshman, getting going. Brown 
Rips it across and broke it up on the way to Garrison. I think that was C.J. Avery, the weak side linebacker. So now third and long, facing Boston College here. Now we've talked about it. We've talked about the youth on Brian Van Gorder's defense, and it's it's shown up in flashes. I mean, Avery's a sophomore. Etheridge is a sophomore. These guys are, are, are playmakers. It's a nice play against the pass right there and force a third down and very long. Brown, and he'll be sacked. Caban gets the sack by Anthony Brown back in midfield. What a big play. Louisville defensively. Well, how about Caban? Watch 53 here and watch him just muscle, muscle, muscle. Use those hands. You get some strength. You separate. And when you separate, that's when you use the momentum of that offensive lineman coming back at you to rip and swim, get past him. And gets just enough of Anthony Brown to get his defense a big stop. Here's the punt. Trying to pin Burr and it will bounce into the end zone. So Boston College moved it to around the midfield area. The sun on BC's roster. I'll say this. There are a lot of notable footballers um, on the Eagle is roster. It Nat King Cole. No, that's his grandson oh, plays. Shoot, I was way off. But he's not a current NFL head okay, coach okay, or a Super Bowl winner. <laughs> Hassan Hall. Hand off from Puma Pass, and boy, Hall stuck with it. Got, uh -oh. I think, five on the play. Hey, Hassan Hall, he's a tough dude. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fast, he's, he's light. I mean, he's supposed to be a speedster, but he finishes. He finishes. Now, he had a, he had a big fumble in the uh, second quarter, I believe, of the FSU game in, 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 a, in an important spot. So he's got to be careful when he does finish. But he, but he brings a load when he finishes for a, a lighter guy. Play fake by pass. Looking here near side, that's big Kamari Everett. He'll be short of the first down at the 29-yard line. Kamari Everett's a load, 6'6", 270 from Atlanta. You know, one thing that they've, they've done a good job, Louisville, when they get on the run, they put Puma on the run, they... They take the the ends, their rush game out of it a little bit. When you've got Wyatt Ray and Zach Allen, if you sit back there in that pocket all day, they're going to eventually get to you. But by putting them on the run, it helped them quite a bit. And Zach Allen's got another one. No help there. None. He tackled Hassan Hall and then maybe even Puma Pass on a throw in. Goodness gracious, what a, what a day Allen's had. He just eats him up. It makes up his mind as soon as that ball snapped. <laughs> He's got, he had Hall and he started taking down pass just for fun. Swallows him up. Here, here's a hint for your Aflac trivia question. Yeah. Some of, of that, some of that technique, not necessarily the get off because some of it's uncoachable, was taught by the answer to that Aflac trivia That's right. question. Yeah. And it's not Nat King Cole. It's a big, big stop for the defense on third and short. Sure is. Three and out goes Louisville. Here's Walker. Backing up. Looked like he might have misjudged it. Now shoots through. Look out. Michael Walker gets by King the punter. And they're in Louisville territory for their second possession. <laughs> 46 yard punt, 32 yard return by Walker. His best of the year. Back after this. Von Miller's wanted to build. Make the trip to Raleigh, so he sent the offense a text before the game to get them amped up, but they're certainly happy to have him back out here today. Well, and you see the the impact A.J. Dillon has. B.C. plus field start, and here's Bailey again, trying to fill that void, and he got 12 on first down. Well, James, you mentioned it at the top. Steve Adazio yesterday. A.J. Dillon, a generational player, but boy, David Bailey's thumping it good now, huh? Absolutely. He's good looking back, the freshman. And got to the second level pretty quick there, to the 24, before he got knocked back by Avery. So, Brian White, the running backs coach here at Boston College, he, he's coached some greats not only here, but back to the Ron Dane, Heisman Trophy winner, coached him at Wisconsin. 
all across the college football landscape. And he's he's not only got a good one, AJ Dillon, but showing his backups can go as well. Here goes Bailey again. First down. And this is this is textbook Boston College football right here now. As the Eagles pick up a first down and they're in the CPI security red zone here. Well, look, nobody with a hand on the ground for Louisville. Uh, they can get up and even stop the bleeding here, Wes. I mean, that's that's that quick hurry up, and, it, and it's got to feel like at this point right now for that defense. Last week, where they get into it in, in the second half against Georgia Tech, and everything's working, everything's just coming right down your throat right now with this hurry up. Even though it's a different style, you're getting some flashbacks. Somebody's got to step up and make a play. In the CPI security red zone, Bailey to work again. Took a big lick, but falls forward to about the seven. Third down and short. We talked about Hassan Hall running the ball for Louisville. Finish the run. Finish. Finish. I mean, David Bailey, he's not done until that whistle blows. He's finishing. He's getting those extra yards. He's, he's putting some punishment, some pounding on this defense. It adds up. Give him another one and falls forward to about the five. C.J. Avery to stop. So now... Lichtenberg's already hit a 38-yarder, James. It's a four-point game and under six to go. So what do you do here? Uh, this is a tough call. This is what you're going to have fourth in the yard. You got the big banger. You know, a seven-point seven lead is, is a big number. It's obviously a touchdown. You miss it, and a touchdown can take can put Louisville in the lead, but you got them on their heels, and you feel like you can, you can outpower for a yard. This is what the offensive line wants. I'll guarantee you that. Look at the big bodies. And now Steve Adazio on a time moderate out. jog toward Boston the line Carl. judge gets the timeout called. And we'll step aside as well. Big fourth down coming up when we come back. Coming in. Tonight. The feeling... Give is Bailey, banged on, leaning, and I don't think got it. Boy, Louisville did a really good job. Boykin, the defensive technique guy inside, the first guy there. In fact, they don't even need to measure. Louisville gets the stop on downs. And the cards are going to take over at their five. Penetration, penetration kills it. Boom, they stand them up. Winning that fight, the guys in the white jerseys, Bailey's hit deeper in the backfield. The second effort's going to get him a little bit of a lunge, but not enough. A great job to stand him right up, get underneath those pads. How about that? You drive all the way down there, and Louisville really can't stop the run that entire drive. And then when they need it the most, they finally stiffen, and they don't give up a yard. Now can the offense march it down? Hassan Hall picks up five. Out to about the 10. The Boston College drive was eight plays, and they give it away on downs with a four-point lead. We'll see where that goes in the storyline of this game, James. Well, and it, I mean, it's you look at it. You, you kick a field goal, you're up seven. And yeah, you, you feel like, my goodness, we should be able to get one the way we've dominated, especially this series right now. You're a BC fan, you're hoping it, it doesn't factor in. And the defense can just get you the ball back. Second and five. Play clock down to three for Puma Pass. Gets it snapped, hands to Hall, and nothing. Boy, BC played that beautifully. Wyatt Ray in off the defensive end spot. You know, and speaking of getting underneath that pad level and standing guys up, here's Wyatt Ray just scooting inside. You know, Wyatt Ray is almost like those pitchers. We come on with the Red Sox. It's, he can give you the power, and he can give you the quick, nifty changeup. In this case, it's speeding it up with the changeup, the change of speed, making guys look how upset Bobby Petrino is. He wants to get this ball snapped. It's a big third down for his offense. Looking here, caught up top. The catch is made, Devontae Pete, and that'll be enough for the first down. Third catch of the day for Pete at six feet six. 
Well, the big body working right there on Will Harris. Plenty of time for pass. You know, you, you've got a big body one. But first things first, be in position. Where are they, where are they running those reps? Yeah. Where are those sticks? They're trying to get to those sticks. That's all that matters right there in that situation. Good job by Louisville to keep it alive. Pass the throw. What a catch. He held on. What a catch by Des Fitzpatrick. Third catch for Fitzpatrick might be the best of his life. <laughs> and he, and he, he's going to have control by securing it, tucking it on the helmet. Hello? Anyone home? Is anyone home? I can't get service. And he held on to it. In the roll. Yeah. And, you know, there's no question, too. It was a good call, uh, the bang-bang by the official, to see that he had control. Well, you'll go a long way not see one like that yeah. again. Good focus. Paul breaks free. Oh. You cannot give Hassan Hall a crack in the door, James. Lucas Dennis, the tackle. One more time. First of all, just to go back and get a hand on it, knowing that the hit's going to come, and then, then to keep control when you, you hit it full speed, you hit the ground. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Those are the kind of plays they got it. They can't make it. First and ten. Out on the perimeter hall. He's going to be brought down by Will Harris. Good job by Hamp Cheevers. Hamp Cheevers to fight off his block and to make sure he gets out there and gets that edge. Everybody's giving chase to Hassan Hall. And if that corner doesn't get set, he can get out there, make that turn, and it's off to the races with his speed. So an excellent job fight by the cornerback. Second down. It loose. Catch is made. 2 2 Atwell. Stopped by Richardson, shy of the 45, and that'll be another first down. Chartarius 2 2 Atwell. Little guy out of Miami with a 12 yard catch. With the pressure on Puma Pass, he'll, he'll step out by a little bit of time. And those routes, when they come all the way across the field like that, when you're, you're giving chase, it's tough to hang with these guys for so long. A little bit of a rhythm now here for this offense after the defensive stop. Pass, guns, caught. And that is another grab for Fitzpatrick. And another first down in Louisville. Very confident in the offensive run and pass possession here. Getting a little bit of everything, James. Uh, and most importantly for Puma Pass is getting a little bit of protection. Get nobody there. Plenty of time for everything to develop out there in front. He's seeing the field well. He's spinning a good ball. <laughs> Which he really has been the last couple weeks. He's been playing a lot better. First and ten. Inside route. And the catch is made. Devontae Pete another grab and a first down to the 29. Pass is now six for six in the second half. Devontae Pete goes six six. Hamp Cheevers, he's not six feet tall. Good coverage. But that big body, those long arms. A lot you can do. Dazio's defense found that out the hard way against those big guys from Raleigh that Ryan Finley was throwing to all last Saturday. So many times right there in their hip pocket, but able to connect. Pass wants to throw, and that'll snap the streak looking for Atwell. RPO look. Allen pressured him into an errant throw. Second down. Louisville has moved it from its own five after Boston College was stopped on fourth and short. And now facing second and ten at the BC 29 in the final seconds of period three here at Alumni Stadium. Pass, another quick throw and a drop that time. Fitzpatrick, the intended receiver. Slightly behind him, it looked like James. Yeah, but it's got to be. It's got to be caught. It's. It, he's been putting it right there on the money so many times. This one, it, it wasn't perfect, but it's a ball that if, if Dez gives it just another beat, secure the catch before you take off running. Third, the full ten for the Cards. Richard 
Johnson, the linebacker, who didn't play in the first half because of a targeting call in the second half last week. Pass. The sophomore takes the sack, and it's a big one by this defense. So we start the fourth with Kane trying to fire it up the chimney shoot here. And it will bounce inside the 10, James. How about that? Another one. Touched up at the seven yard line. That's where BC will start in our summary after three periods of play here at Chestnut Hill today. And one well, of the total yards are close, the plays are close, the turnovers. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, this is this is it. Fourth quarter football. It's it, it a huge game, middle of the season for both of these teams. Leo trying to do everything they can to get back on track, get a get a win. And for Boston College, you're at home, favored by two touchdowns. This is one you got to win. 15th carry for David Bailey starts the fourth period possession for BC. He's got about 67 yards now in the ball game on 15 carries. Tackle made by Kane Pass. He's been bouncing around, changing the channels all day. David Bailey's just a freshman from North Carolina. A.J. Dillon is shelved one more week with that ankle sprain. Baylor flips it out to the 13. That'll be enough for the first down. There is a flag, and it's offside on Louisville. You know, we asked, guys, yesterday, we asked Steve Adazio about David Baylor. We thought we were going to see him in Raleigh last week. We did not. And James? Offside, defense number 98. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. And after Steve Adazio told us that... Uh, Bailey was a thumper. Yeah. And I said, well, how many plays can the thumper play? 12. He's brought, that's 15. Get hey, he keep feeding the way he's running it. Yep. Bangs into his own guy and then still picked up eight. Coming out part of it. It was A.J. Dillon. It was a year ago in Louisville. Yep. And a nice win on the road for B.C. And, and, and this is what gets that big offensive line, those tight ends jazzed. Well, Bailey got stacked up right there. I don't know that he got the first down at the 28. We'll see. Well, a lot of things offensively with the game plan last week, Wes, went out the window. It just they, they couldn't stay on the field. 0 for 10 on third downs before they had one. They were 5 of 12 for third downs before this snap. Brown will just shove it across the 28 to the first down. That guy right there is a player in the hoodie. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy. Jay Dillon, he's, he, he, they're calling it a, an ankle sprain, but you got to think it's a high ankle sprain yes. because, you know, just a, a regular ankle sprain doesn't seem to linger so long. Here's Benny Glides coming near side. Glides fires through. Good hard running out to the 48 for Ben Glides. 19 yards and a first down. Big one, too. And you mentioned Kobe White doesn't have a catch yet. Day, but it's Kobe White that's going to help spring this to this blocking on the edge. There are the guys on the inside, and there you saw the very end of it. Kobe White driving out that defensive back, giving his guy a chance. When those big plays hit, a lot of times it's because of those outside blockers. Play fake. Here's White. The catch falling into the white stripe out of bounds near the 30 29 of Louisville. And they are calling it a catch on White's first grab of the day. You make the block, you get the rock. Good job to look it in. That right foot looked like it came down. 23 yard throw from Brown. Here's the quick toss and glides. Trying to find the same boy. Not happening there. Okiki, the red shirt freshman at linebacker. Etheridge, Hicks. Avery, Okiki. <laughs> Not a junior, senior, mother, No, James. no. Freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. Been some good linebackers to go through there, too. You mentioned Keith Kelsey, Jr. earlier in the show. Yeah. Out of the 25 goes Baylor. All right, now defensively, it's, it's hey, one play they're getting after. It's, you, you don't let them put it back to back. Got to stiffen and you got to be consistent. They, they got a nice play for Brian Van Gorder. They, they got to keep it up. You got to get set, gap control, be sound, and find a way to slow it down here. Off tackle, Bailey. Boy, took a lick right at the line. Was that pass? I think it was. And CJ Avery. Boy, they 
think that's C.J. Avery's come back into this lineup. With a boom. Man, look at that. Louisville has matched him. Here's Brown out of the backfield. Levy inside the 10 at the 5. And down to around the 2 goes Travis Levy. Come right back at you. Don't even take any time to decide on this one. Fourth and four. There's Levy doing a good job of tucking it and turning it up and go getting even 20 more than needed. And again, guys blocking downfield. And here's a chance for a big score for BC. Bailey at the right side and stretches down to about the one. Almost five minutes into this fourth period of play, James. This is a big possession of the game here because it's a four-point game and could become two possessions with a touchdown. Bailey, touchdown. Ten and a half to play. Second rushing score of the year for the Maryland freshman David Bailey. Defensively, yeah, they're hurrying it up, but you got to get set. You get too many guys not quite set, taking their time to get down in that stance. It's it's do or die when you're down there knocking on the door. And I know you're tired, but you know, BC winning that battle, blowing off the ball, and an easy stroll into the end zone for a touchdown. 13 plays, 93 yards, four minutes. Carolina about this time in the game here, but I wonder if they realize David Bailey's from North Carolina High School back in there. That's it. Coincidence. End over end kick and Hall. Signal for the fair catch. Louisville will play. Cars will come around here. You know. and Zach Allen shaking up. Remember we saw him come off the field last week in Raleigh. Only to head right back out there. And that time of year, though. You know, it's a, stars or not, it's, it's rough and tough. A lot of banging, those yep. bodies. Snap the pass. Low people, and he's a freshman saying that. <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, when you can run like Tutu, everybody's slow. Yeah. Well, how about Jim Reed, the defensive coordinator? He goes, well, that's, that's pretty smart for a freshman. He's got it pegged. <laughs> He looks slow late in the game. Time. Pass to throw under duress, and before Ray could get there, he threw it incomplete toward Mickey Crum, the tight end. You know, the back and forth, the play call. You bring four, and Puma Pass is going to get you. They get it blocked. And then you don't have him rolling out. You bring a blitz, and the pressure is there. And he's forced to hurry it up. So now with 945 left to play in this game and two scores down. Not dire straits here, but I'd like to stay on the field with a big third down and 10. Across the middle and Fitzpatrick couldn't pull it in. Louisville going for this. No, they'll punt. No, no way. Almost 10 minutes left in this game. And you know, it's now that one. That one is a little bit further behind. Was, was it Des that caught the one on his ear yeah. earlier? Yes. Yeah, so we know we can turn around and go back there and, and make it. And Bobby Petrino talking it over with Puma Pass. Now it is up to that, that defense, though. They, they cannot let Boston College drive the length of the field again like they did on that last drive. King. Nice looking punt here. Walker looking toward the sun from the 20. 25 and whoa. He'll be brought down at the 28-yard line. Flags. Kamari Everett, the tight end, was down there. And D. Smith, the two number 11s on the roster. Holding on return team number 80. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So we'll take a timeout. Chestnut Hill on a Saturday. BC by 11 back after this. He's really playing. Some some mean some some physical uh, offense as a unit for NC State go up against those those big timers that, that front seven for Clemson. Here's David Bailey. He's had a career day. Picked up almost seven on first down. Well, let's talk about the Slingers next Saturday. 
Trevor Lawrence, a freshman from Cartersville, Georgia, and Ryan Finley, the sixth-year player out of Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, how about the, the numbers for the, the freshman, uh, the efficiency? You know, and it's glad that he's okay after the concussion, all that trauma, and it looks like he'll move the chains. A nice pickup there by Bailey. Clock moving toward nine minutes to go. But, you know, Ryan Finley's is... He put some balls on the money. We've, we've talked about it a couple times throughout this broadcast. It was, yeah, it's good to have these big physical receivers that can separate, like all those those guys, Harmon and company. But you've got to have a quarterback that can get it there, too. Play fake by Brown and Sweeney, just a rolling catch of it. Fifth catch of the day for the tight end, Tommy Sweeney. Well, and it was, you know what? It, did he gain a yard? I don't even know if he gained a yard, but still, it's, you know, you're going to get 20. 20 ticks off the clock here and eat away at that clock that'll add up. They're quickly over the ball though. Bailey just kind of follows the lead. Avery the tackle. Been impressed with the freshman from Ridley, Maryland. Number one tailback in the state a year ago, James. Well, they compare him to A.J. Dillon with his power, but, but what has shown up a little bit to me is, is that he's got a nice little burst too for a big man, 245 pounds. And, he, and I love the way he finishes. 25 carries, 106 yards today for Bailey. What a big down here, Wes. Third down and eight. Can Louisville find a way to get off the field? Brown, Levy in the flat, tried to turn it up. And out of bounds, the clock will stop at the 28. Caban, the tackle. That's a good looking prospect, too, by the way. Redshirt Jr. at 253 on a 6-1 frame. Playing at the end spot. So Steve Adazio going to let the play clock wind down. The game clock rolling with it inside seven and a half minutes. Two possession game here for his club. Trying to get to five and two. It would be the first time in his tenure they've been five and two with a win today. Wobbly kick. Fielded by Burns. And BC rallies to the play. Shy of the 27. Time for this week's Toyota Let's Go Places. You get into this town. <laughs> well, every corner. Boston Harbor. <laughs> All you can handle. Oh. You know, let's go plates. You don't need to go any other places if you just come to this place. Jordan Travis is coming to the game. He played last week in the game against Georgia Tech late. So Travis into the ball game now at quarterback. And this is the freshman from the Benjamin School in West Palm Beach, Florida. His head coach, my old roommate in college, Eric Kresser. And how about the job that Sebastian does here? He was exact same situation, didn't snap that head around. He was in position earlier, got called for the defensive pass interference. This time he's stride for stride, sees those eyes get big on the receiver, whip that head around and knocks it away. Here's Travis. Cutting it loose, incomplete, trying to go to Devontae Pete. Cresser, of course, started his career in games. What finished in Marshall, right? Yeah, won a national championship there with Randy Moss in Huntington. Yeah. That's my guy. If, if it doesn't interfere too much with the broadcast, I'm going to tell you an Eric Cresser story, head ball coach Steve Spurrier story, that <laughs> it would have happened on this weekend because Florida's playing at Vandy. Yeah. So don't let me forget. <laughs> third down, though. Can't do it over third down and long. That was 6.49 to play in a two-possession game. Travis in trouble. Going to cut it loose and almost caught Fitzpatrick and then deflection to 2-2 two -two Atwell. <laughs> and Louisville goes three and out. Uh, just when BC needed it again, he, they get off the field and nothing you can do, Louisville, but punt it away. It's the, the pressure there in a hurry for Travis. Everybody's covered up down the field, but almost a, <laughs> almost just putting it up there where Des can go up and get it. Oh, man. Just enough. And Boston College may have dodged one there, James. Four possessions, four punts for Louisville in the second half. And Walker, the fair catch. 6.36 to go. Next week. They do get the carry and whoa. Make it 104. Robert Hicks is a freshman from Miami. 
And I mean, just adding to the hit list in this game. Now, we've seen a lot of Dorian Etheridge today, but this Robert Hicks packs a wallop. BC taking the time now. Mm -hmm. Center. Bailey, another carry. And back to the line. It'll be third and long. We approach six minutes to go in the game. Steve Adazio, 35 wins as the Boston College head coach now in six seasons. 48 in his career. Went 13 11 in two seasons at Temple. And that was after he'd been at Florida for six years with Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow, and a Got some of those guys that were with him in Gainesville as assistants also on the staff. Here's Ben Glines in the backfield now with Brown. Third and long, Glines the carry, fires through. Ben Glines breaks free. 40, 35, 30, shot out of bounds at the 25 by Burns. Huge play in the game with 5.17 to go. Oh, without a doubt. You're going to get off the field. You go back to back, great plays defensively. And then you got some guys overrunning. Just out of their assignments, they're running past it, trying to go make a play. Everybody flying around, and Glen Glines takes advantage. There's that one-two. There's that punch. There's that vision. Yep. And again, not only the vision for a guy who's who's a receiver until A.J. Dillon got hurt. Now he comes into the backfield as a running back. The vision, but then you see him. He switches that ball over to the right side, gets it on the outside arm. Then that's, you just mentioned him, Brian White, coaching him up there. Those running backs in the running back room. Yep. Glides one more time, running hard. Well, and these two guys today will have a hard time posting the day that A.J. Dillon did. They've done a nice job substituting for him last year. 272 yards and four scores, and look at that one. Wow. Boy. The strength and the speed. The eraser, Ooh. as his head coach, Steve Adazio, Calls it. He, he can erase any mistake. He can erase a, a lead. He can do it all for us. And they're hoping. Remember, he didn't play last week. Barry sits today. Street closing and a jersey on top. And then he gets a bye week before Miami in that home stretch. So hopefully he can get healthy. Lions banging away. Algiers Jamil Dillon is a six foot, 245 pound sophomore from New London, Connecticut, that is a textbook Adazio football player, James. Mm -hmm. Well, and from that school, Lawrence Academy, they've got a bunch of guys on this team. It's a, it's a former player yep. from Boston College that was the head coach there for quite some time. And sent a lot of guys here this way to play for the Eagles. to go and Steve Adazio's team gets Miami here 13 days from now and then the back end of this schedule is the thing that you have to look at it's brought to you by Logan's Roadhouse at Virginia at Florida State the two roadies home to Clemson on November the 10th and joked with Dabo Sweeney and Steve Adazio in July and Steve told Dabo hey don't worry we'll make sure it's cold <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for October 26th, it can get kind of chilly for some guys from the bottom. Well. I formation, Martin has come in ahead of Glides. In this traditional looking eye on first and 10 at the 10. Glides trying to break through. Boy, Louisville got great penetration. Okiki has played well here today. Louisville has had James moments and another 30 second timeout call for with 3.45 to play. You know, and it's not making excuses for, for Bobby Petrino's defensive side of the ball right now, but it's it's a young team and it's and it's a it's a team that's lacked consistency. So you, you know you, you go back before that grinds big run. You got to put those plays together. You can't show up one play and then take one off. You can't. You know, it's it's got to be every single snap. And if that were the case, you'd almost rather have just a bunch of also.
fans that play on the same page and, and give you some consistency and fit those gaps in the right spots than, than guys that are going to make huge plays and then take a couple off or just not be in the right spot, not know exactly where they fit into the package. And that's one thing that got them with a different style of offense in Georgia Tech last week. And that's one thing that the Temple can do to these guys, not give them a chance to get a new play call in, not give them a chance to get down and get set, not give them a chance to, to catch their breaths as well. Second down, Bailey banging away. And another timeout taken by Louisville with 3.39 to go. And we told you earlier, great football players here, generational players, and Steven. Another happy about the BC start. And be a lot happier at 3:39, right? Yes. One more, one more step towards getting where Steve Adazio's trying to take this program, and it's uh, it hasn't been easy. It, it, you know it. It win, never James. will be easy. I mean, it's, 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 it's never going to roll out there and, and and just say, hey, we can take our pick of any athlete in the, in the nation. Sweet for Smith around the edge. Diving for the pylon. Touchdown. Bang away, bang away. And on third and goal, handed to a blur. Smith talked about all the Florida guys on Louisville's team. They got a couple here. That's a, an excellent job extending, reaching in there, and that's a no doubt. It controls it across the goal line inside that pylon. Former quarterback here. The senior from St. Pete. Just Getting involved. He's been known to throw for him, catch him, and now score one on the ground, right? it for the point after from Lichtenberg. New score now, 3.34 to play, and it's 38 to 20 in favor of Boston College. And James, that is 24 in a row by the Eagles. Quarterback's going at two different styles of, of quarterback. By the way, Duke was seven all with Georgia Tech and scored 21 points in a minute. 49 to end the third quarter and they lead 28 to 14 and now have one game 28 14 in Atlanta Pittsburgh leads Notre Dame it's South Bend I thought that was the score there seven to three it's the unis they got those throwbacks on again. my favorite in, in football Tyler Harrell shy of the 20 that's where Louisville will start quick look at the coach Mendenhall or another guys. These head coaches, when they talk about the ACC getting better, it's it's because of guys coming in and, and turning around some of these programs, like like Adazio. Travis, the quarterback, and almost hit by Cheevers. Looking for Jalen Smith, who is without a catch today for Louisville. And with 3:23 to play, young Travis getting some reps. There. So he played for Cresser, right? Yeah. West Palm. Jordan Travis. It's a. And going to be sacked. And that's McDuffie pulling him down around the one. Zach Allen set it up, but Isaiah McDuffie finished it off. Zach Allen has been setting up a lot of things the penetration penetration just shuts everything down and kills them all and, and, and a nice job of, of hanging on there by McDuffie McDuffie's had a nice day all right we're at Vanderbilt the stand really close there to those sidelines there in Nashville right. Used to oh, yeah. Games. Yeah, sure. and, and Cresser gets in late when we're beating them pretty bad like 35 we're up fourth quarter unlike and, today Cresser's a run play running out the clock Cresser checks off and throws a bomb for a touchdown and the Vandy fans are just giving head ball coach up like, you running up the score, run up the score. Oh, play here in third. Here's Travis on third down. Uh-oh, in trouble. Did he get out? He did. Reach the ball back into play as Wyatt Ray was taking him down. Nice job there by Jordan to just stretch it out. All right, take that safety and then take care of that football and not drop 
happen at the same time. So Cresser checks off the play. <laughs> so Cresser, and I mean, and you got to know Cresser a little bit too, because Cresser, man, he he had one of the strongest arms anybody ever seen. He just loved to just he loved to just air it out. And here, you know, that's all he wants to do is, and he sees the check that's there for him. Yeah. Checks off, throws a bomb for a touchdown, and the Vandy fans, coach, you run up the score, you run up the score. Spurrier turns around to him because it's so close. Like it wasn't me, it was him. The I'll tell you, it is a little bit strange though to, to sit up here in the booth, call a game where a quarterback is playing. Yeah. That his coach used to give me every one of my haircuts during college. Chris used to, well, he was the barber in Yon Hall. He was our, he was a barber. He's a heck of a quarterback and a heck of a barber. He can do it all. That's all you need, right? Someone to teach you how to throw the ball, cut your hair. Was, I'm just beginning to find out that. Almost six years we've worked together. What kind of characters you played with, though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good guys, man. And it's a touch know. of the knee by Anthony Brown gets the clock rolling. Well, Louisville's going to lose a fourth straight game, James. And Wake Forest visit in two weeks to Cardinal Stadium. Boston College, though, is going to go to five and two for the first time in Stephen Dazio's tenure here at Chestnut Hill. Yeah, and, and to do it, to do it in a hurry. You know, I mean, all these, it's funny how everybody just kind of is, is entitled to win and expects to go win 10 games every year, all of these fan bases. And at times, kind of get that sense around here. But, I mean, to, to knock down some of these, some of these hurdles that have stood in the way, it's, you know, they haven't been able to say they've been five and two and, in six years around here. And, and he knew coming in. It was going to be a tough one without A.J. Dillon. But you, you, you let him rest one more week. Now you've got the bye week. I right. hope you can have him when Miami comes to town. Well, here's the other thought, too, for Steve Adazio's team. They're going to hold Louisville to five second-half possessions, James, and no points. No points at all. And there is the final snap of the ball game. So the cards will go to five and two, two and one in the ACC. Or uh, the Eagles go to five and two and two and one in the ACC. Louisville now two and five and winless in four conference games. 38-20 is the final at Alumni Stadium. And in just a moment, Steve Adazio will visit with Rebecca Cable. downs were going to be big today and they proved to be not only big but his defensive effort in the second half by Dazio's Eagles was huge as well and they got a great lift from David Bailey who was there today as the running back spot filling A.J. Dillon's role let's join Rebecca with coach Steve Adazio thank you very much Wes well coach your defense shut out the cards in the second half your offense tacked on a couple